it goes three reasons. Like home values appreciation by about 10% in 2020, and they're forecasted to appreciate by another 5% this year. This has some voicing concerns that may be, and we may be in another housing bubble like the one we experienced a little over a decade ago. So first point one, this time housing supply is extremely limited. The price of a, any market item is determined by supply and demand. If supply is high and demand is low, prices normally decrease. If supply is low and demand is high, prices naturally increase. Between 2006 and 2008, the month's supply of inventory increased from just five months to 11 months. The month's supply was over seven months in 27 of the 36 months, yet home values continue to rise. Months inventory has been under five months for the, and currently, months of inventory has been under five months for the last three years, under four months for 13 of the last 14 months, under three for the last six months, and currently stands at 1.9 months of inventory across all of the United States. So to that, I don't want to go read all this. So the first point, this time housing supply is extremely limited. Expand on that of why you think that is a good reason that we're definitely not in a housing bubble. Well, it's precisely that. We have very limited inventory, very limited inventory, and we're having more and more people come to Texas because of the job opportunities. And Funny enough, because of the politics, right? Like it's it's business friendly, it's affordable. I mean, we have people moving here because how expensive it's gotten on either coast. It's gotten mm -hmm. ridiculously expensive to live there. And you know, you're representing a buyer right now for for a listing and everything, and they're able to sell their home over there and get a massive property here in the Dominion. You know, in a very exclusive area and everything. Cool, nice yard, nice size lot. Everything it's, it's that beautiful. they wouldn't be able to afford in California, right? So in California, that house will be owned by a celebrity or something. So you're you're looking at that affordability. You're looking at all that. And we are just getting started with all this. Yeah. The infrastructure that Texas has for growth is Im immense. The companies that have just started to relocate, the massive companies, and then that's not even counting all the smaller companies that have been relocating. Um, last I heard, what was it? Uh, shoot, Wells Fargo. No, not Wells Fargo. It was another bank. I ah, damn it. I can't remember who it was. Goldman Sachs. It was one of them. Oh, Schwab. No, I don't know, but they're, they moved here. They're getting. They were leasing like eight hundred thousand square feet of space in Texas, relocating their headquarters and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I don't know, like the Nasdaq, like Nasdaq trading company platform industry. Like they were talking about yeah. moving their platforms here because New York's trying to come out with uh, taxing trades. Mm. And they're like, if you do that, we're gone. Like the New York Stock Exchange came out and said that <laughs> Texas, uh, Nasdaq, they're like, you pass that crap we're out and that, that'd be a huge hit to places 100 like percent. so you you have all of that you have low inventory and you have so many of these policies like the article that you just talked about before of how and now you know all of the things that ab is doing to try to open back up texas and everything it's just i don't see that slowing down anytime soon we're just getting started oh and there's some people that said this like you see all the news being filled with oh texas is uh, he, Biden called us Neanderthals um, that was this hilarious. week, but there's people who come out. It was a celebrity. I can't remember who it was. that said like the second that came out, no masks in Texas. I'm moving there today. Yeah, and just declared it right there. Well, like, I'm gone. That, that's what I find hilarious. Even the reason why they're trying to get rid of Newsom and everything, they he, they went too far. Yep. You understand? They've gone too far. Flo in New York, they're f flooding to Florida. So, let me and now the caveat because I know a lot of people say this too is, well, yeah, what are all these people not paying their mortgage? When all these foreclosures happens, it's going to crash the real estate market. How would you combat that? Here argument? in Texas? No, the, just the nation. I mean, because this is a national aspect, and Texas is uh, just being in real estate and here and doing the stuff that I yeah. do with our market updates. I know we're right in there with that. I know there's some high, some low. We're a well, part that, of the low. Well, that's the thing that you have is when you have such low inventory and you have so many people moving, are we going to have full foreclosures when, uh, I would say, if the uh, moratoriums are ever over? Um, yes, we will. But I don't think it's going to be to a point like a 2008 kind of foreclosure or anything like that because the equity spread these houses are having yeah. is insane. There's some crazy stuff. In this the way these houses spreads. are appreciating. What was what was the the research we used to do? We used to go driving for dollars, right? We would create a list and they would scrub it through uh, the county to see if any deed transfers were later than 10 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Because we didn't want houses that were 10 years and newer 
of D transfers that somebody might have bought it because there's no equity. We've gone down to like five years, if yeah. that, because the appreciation we have seen in, in these last, last five years, years oh, has mean, been nuts. So the last six months were 10% year over year meeting sales price increases. Yeah. And, and the properties that we're holding, the, the, uh, we're about to buy a package of deals, right? Of, of a bunch of properties from the last time you ran comps to now that package, you know, has been going up. You understand? Like everything that we're doing is real estate, all of that. That's why I believe like kind of going back to the point that and I it's made. It's not guaranteed, but it's one of those things that like, no, it's, and nothing's guaranteed, right? We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. We we just had like a Black Swan event that, you know, that was completely unexpected with COVID, right? Yeah. So we, excluding the unforeseen, yeah, excluding the unforeseen, the move, especially all these massive companies relocating, all of these things, that's the first step. There's a tail that follows all of that. You understand? That hasn't hit Texas sure. yet. So we have that long tail of all these companies, all these people moving here that hasn't hit Texas yet. It's like, and one thing great for a real estate market is an influx of people. Like you show that, like, and I'm curious when they ever they release this census data from 2020, what has changed from 2010 to 2020 as far as population and migration and stuff like yeah. that. We can see it with the U-Haul reports that people are leaving the coasts, leaving the Northeast, leaving the West Coast, and they're going south and they're going in. Well, so, and then and then you're also going to have, you know, tourism is going to start picking up. People are desperate to travel. As much as everybody likes to be appalled by whatever, you know, the mass mandates and all this. They go to other countries in a heartbeat and remove their masks as soon as they get there. Yeah. You understand? Like people are desperate to go places. So Texas opening up, not mandating masks. Tourism. Tourism is gonna start picking oh, yeah. up again. That's fantastic for our hotel and yeah. hospitality industry. So here. you have and especially in San Antonio, like we're gonna have much more growth. We have a lot more growth to go. I mean, we we haven't even begun to hit the the I think the that even like the rise of the growth that we have in San Antonio. So yeah, I mean, I don't see Texas slowing down anytime soon. Texas or the, or the nation in that sense across the board. Well, the nation, I think it, it, it it's going to matter where you are, right? Yeah. Like, if you go to New York, I think... But New York nationally, is, the housing market's also not going to crash. Because that also depends no. on our, our lending market. depends on that. So if it crashes everywhere but Texas, like, we're going to have, have some spillover because it's harder to get money yeah, and mortgages for that. So the second point, this time... Households have, this time compared to 2008, this time households have plenty of equity. Again, during the housing boom, it wasn't just purchasers who got caught up in the frenzy. Existing homeowners started using their homes like ATM machines. From 2005 through 2007, Americans pulled out a record $824 billion in equity. Today, the banks and the American people have shown they learned the valuable lesson from the housing crisis a little over a decade ago. Cash out refinance volume over the last three years was less than a third of what it was compared up to the three years leading up to the crash of 2008. Atom Data Solutions just released their fourth quarter 2020 U.S. Home Equity Report. In the, if we combine the 38% of homes that are owned free and clear with the 18.7% of homes that have at least 50% equity, we realize that 56.7% of all homes in the country have a minimum of minimum of 50% equity. Having that's significantly better than the equity situation of 2008. So when we talk about the foreclosure aspect, all these foreclosures are going to come back. There's just because they're in foreclosure doesn't mean that they don't have massive amount of equity. If they've owned their house for the past three years, yeah. probably they got room to get out unless they've been like, they are demanding all this back interest. They get no forgiveness for all the interest. Cause when you stop paying your mortgage, that interest goes up so fast. Oh yeah. Especially in the first couple of years, but to see that massive amount of equity sitting there in people's houses, it, it, that's fantastic to see as far as like, there's a housing bubble forming housing is going to crash. So what do you No, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's the same thing when people i uh, have been telling people <laughs> consistently because there's still people invest uh marketing the foreclosures and I, I did a workshop this week and also we have a workshop coming up on march 20th that we're doing on for you to get started in wholesaling um but i did a workshop about cold calling and all that and people were like well what about marketing to foreclosures because of short sales I'm like short sales are a very tedious process to go through and people don't have the motivation to do it 
people didn't have the motivation of going through it because the seller has to do a lot of the work on a short sale. They didn't have the motivation to do it back before when foreclosures were big. Now, when they know they're not being kicked out of their homes, they have no reason to. And then you add, because we've covered stats on this on, on the previous po- uh, episodes, there, you're talking about like, I think it was about 1%, 1 to 4% of the mortgages are in forbearance are close to negative equity. Close to negative equity. That's it. The rest all have equity in them. And there's only like 5% of federal mortgages are even in forbearance anyways. Yeah. So, it's so like- you're, you're looking at all this and it's like most of the homes have a bunch of equity. Even if foreclosure comes, they can still list their home, sell it fast, take care of the mortgage and walk away with money. You understand? So I don't see foreclosure being an issue. Uh, I don't either. I don't see that being a reason that the market's going to tank. So the third point, this time housing demand is real. During the housing boom in the mid 2000s, without considering historic market trends, people got caught up in the frenzy and bought houses based on unrealistic beliefs that the housing value would continue to escalate. Basically just making a bet on no fundamentals, except for the fact that I can afford this mortgage. I could put no money down and I can sell it in six months to a year for more money than I brought. They were buying it like a day trading housing and real estate and stocks with a massive amount of debt. The mortgage industry fed into the craziness by making mortgage money available to just about anyone as shown in the mortgage credit availability index published by the mortgage bankers association. The higher the index, the easier it is to get a mortgage. The lower the index, the more difficult it is to obtain one. Prior to the housing boom, the index stood just below 2000 or I'm sorry. I don't know. I got 2000. Prior to the housing boom, the index stood just below 400 in 2006. The index hit an, in 2006, the index hit an all-time high of over 868. Again, just about anyone could get a mortgage. Today, the index stands at 122 and a half, which is well below even the pre, pre-boom level. So basically, in leading up to the housing boom, it you have like 400 to get a point in the middle of the boom. They're saying it rose all the way 868. And today it's down at 122, less than half than what it was before even the boom started in 2003, four, five, and six. In the current real estate market, demand is real, not fabricated. Millennials, the largest generation in the country, have come of age to marry and have children, which are two major drivers for home ownership. So that is the third reason. What do you... <laughs> I mean, I I completely agree. I I think one of the biggest rise that we're seeing is that we're seeing millennials. They're coming in. It's a large demographic that's coming in. They're they're finding themselves wealthier and wealthier now, too. 